السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طلاب المرحلة الثانية كلية الصيدلة جامعة بابل Our topic today is the growth hormone Growth hormone also called somatotrophin is a 199-91 sorry amino acid polypeptide hormone it is synthesized and secreted by special cells in the anterior pituitary gland called somatotrops. It was thought that growth hormone was produced primarily during periods of growth. However, this has proved to be incorrect because the rate of growth hormone production in adults is almost as great as in children. Growth hormone is necessary for growth and contributes to the regulation of metabolic functions. One of the most striking effects of growth hormone is linear bone growth, which results from its action on the epiphyseal growth plates of the long bones. Also have many important metabolic effects. Growth hormone has its highest circulating level in adolescents, followed by children and adults. In this figure, we see the site where growth hormone is produced from a specialized cells called somatotrops. This hormone facilitate the rate of protein synthesis by all of the cells in the body. On fatty acids, it enhances fatty acid, acids metabolism and increases the use of fatty acids are as a fuel in the body. Growth hormone increases conversion of fatty acids to acetyl coenzyme A and it its subsequent utilization as a source of energy. Sometimes this effect is also great that large quantities of acetoacetic acid are formed by the liver, which results in release of these acetoacetic acids into the body fluid results in ketosis and fatty liver and ketogenic effects. We will discuss that in details in lecture of insulin. Go hormone also maintain or increase blood glucose level by decreasing the use of glucose as a fuel. It has an initial effect of increasing insulin levels. However, the predominant effect of prolonged growth hormone excess is to increase the glucose level despite an insulin increase. This is because the growth hormone induces a resistance to insulin, as that occur in type 2 diabetes. Growth hormone will induce insulin resistance in the peripheral tissue and inhibit the uptake of glucose by the muscles and adipose tissue. As I say, we will discuss that in details in the next lectures. Insulin and carbohydrates are necessary for growth, promoting the action of growth hormone because they provide energy for metabolism of growth. Also, insulin enhances amino acid transport into the cells and subsequently increases protein synthesis in the cell. As we said, the most important and striking effect of growth hormone is on the bones and cartilage. We have to discuss this topic with each other. Growth hormones stimulate longitudinal growth by increased formation of a new bone and cartilage. The growth effect of growth hormone begins gradually in the first two years of life and reach a peak in puberty. 
all aspects of cartilage growth are stimulated by growth hormone, including one of the most striking effects of growth hormone is the linear bone growth results from its action on epiphyseal growth plates of the long bones and also the width of the bone increased because of enhanced periosteal growth. It means linear bone growth is producing by the effects of growth hormone on the epiphyseal growth plates while the increased width of the bone occur because the effect of growth hormone sorry on the periosteal growth visceral and endocrine organs skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles skin connective tissues are all undergo increased growth in response to growth hormone as a mechanism for increasing growth growth hormone have two principal mechanisms for increasing bone growth first mechanism as we said growth hormones stimulate the long bones going in the length of the epiphyseal cartilage result in deposition of a new cartilage tissue and conversion of this cartilage tissue into a new bone by late adolescence epiphyseal cartilage has used up at the same time bony fusion occur between the shaft and epiphysis at each end of the bone so that no further lengthening of the bone can occur i mean during adults uh, during adulthood no further lengthening of the bone can occur during adulthood in spite of presence of growth hormone in the circulation the second mechanism by which growth hormone stimulates growth of the bones growth hormone stimulates osteoplasts in the bone periosteum and in some bone cavities to deposit a new bone on the surface of the older bone simultaneously osteoclast in the bone will remove the old bone when the rate of deposition of the new bone is more than the rate of resorption of the old bone there will be an increase in the thickness of the bone thus the bones can continue to become thicker throughout life under the influence of growth hormone and as example of these bones are the membranous bones the jaw bone and the skull so growth hormone can increase the thickness <coughs> of the bone during adulthood by the effect of the second mechanism this figure demonstrate the stages that our long bones pass through in the first stage this is our bone of the fetus which is compromised of cartilage only at the second to third month of intrauterine life a blood vessels and a compact bone will develop of the childhood there is a cavity of the bone and at the end of the long bone there is a spongy bone develops of the secondary ossification sites which are this and this at the adolescence there is a plate of growth at the two ends of the long bone 
when the new bone will deposit to increase the length of the bone. These ossification centers will be closed at the end of the adolescence. In many instances, the increased growth of visceral and endocrine organs is accompanied by enhanced functional capacity. For example, increased growth of cardiac muscle is accompanied by increase in cardiac output. Many of the effects of growth hormone depend on a family of peptides called insulin-like growth factors, and they are also called somatomedians. These are produced mainly by the liver, and the growth hormone cannot directly produce bone growth. Instead, it acts indirectly by causing the liver to produce insulin-like growth factors. These peptides act on the cartilage and the bones to promote their growth. At least four insulin-like growth factors have been identified. Of these, the IGF-1 appears to be the more important in terms of growth. The IGFs have structures that is similar to that of the pro-insulin. This undoubtedly explains the insulin-like activity of IGFs and the weak action of insulin on growth. Insulin-like growth factor levels are themselves influenced by a family of at least six binding factors called the insulin-like growth factor binding proteins. In this figure, we demonstrate the effects of growth hormone by the direct and indirect action of a growth hormone. The direct action of a growth hormone is anti-insulin. Why? Because it will act on the fat to increase fat breakdown and release of fats. While on carbohydrates metabolism, it will increase the blood glucose level and increase the anti-insulin effects. Why? Indirect action of a growth hormone promoting through the effect of a growth hormone on the liver and other tissue, which will produce insulin-like growth factors. Insulin-like growth factors will act on the skeletal muscles uh, and uh, skeleton and the extraskeletal action. The extraskeletal action include increasing protein synthesis and cell growth and proliferation. While the skeletal effect of a growth hormone through the insulin-like growth factor, including increasing a cartilage formation and the skeletal growth. As it passes to the circulation, a growth hormone attaches weakly to plasma proteins in the blood. Therefore, it's released from the blood into the tissue rapidly, having a half-life of 20 to 50 minutes. While somatomedine C, I mean the insulin-like growth factor C, attached strongly to a carotene and released slowly with a half-life of about 20 minutes hours. As you remember, we discussed in the first lecture how attachment of hormones to uh, carrier proteins in the circulation will increase its half-life. So, because low affinity of a growth hormone to its carrier protein in the circulation, it will have a half-life of 20 to 50 minutes and so it will pass rapidly from the circulation while somatomedines, which are the insulin-like growth factors, C, attach strongly to the chiropotein and released within a half-life of about 20 hours. So somatomedines will act to increase the time of growth hormone action indirectly. 
The secretion of growth hormone is regulated by two hypothalamic hormones, which are the growth hormone releasing hormone, which increases the growth hormone release, and the somatostatin, which inhibits the growth hormone release. A third hormone, which is recently identified called ghrelin, is also have effect on the secretion of growth hormone. These hypothalamic influences, including the growth hormone releasing hormone and the somatostatin, are tightly regulated by neural, metabolic, and hormonal factors. <coughs> this figure demonstrates the factors that influence the effects of growth hormone and its release from the pituitary gland which include the ghrelin, the growth hormone releasing hormone, and the somatostatin and the inhibitory effect of uh, insulin-like growth factors, which are released from the liver. How growth hormone secretion is fluctuated during the 24-hour period? The secretion of a growth hormone fluctuated during the 24 hour with a peak level which occurred one to four hours after the onset of sleep. Okay, it means during the sleep stage three and four. The nocturnal sleep burst which occur for 70% of daily growth hormone secretion are greater in children than in adults. As you see in the figure, there is a high level of growth hormone occur in the midnight when you are asleep, passing in stage three and four of sleep. And you see that its secretion is also increased due to citraneous exercise. Which factors stimulate growth hormone secretion? Many factors can stimulate growth hormone secretion, including hypoglycemia, fasting, starvation, increased blood level of amino acid stress, heavy exercise, glucagon, which is the hormone opposite to insulin, pyrogenes, androgenic agonists, apomorphine and dopamine receptors agonists, estrogens and androgen and also ghrelin which is secreted from the gastric cells. While the factors that inhibit growth hormone secretion is rapid eye movement to sleep which is the early stages of sleep, increased glucose level, free fatty acid release, cortisol, obesity, severe emotional deprivation, medroxyprogesterone, growth hormone, and the insulin like a growth factor. When growth hormone and insulin growth factors secretion, when demonstrated in the figure, it will pass to a high level of secretion occur during puberty. High level of secretion of a growth hormone occur during puberty, followed by childhood and finally the adulthood. But as you see, there is no zero percent of growth hormone during adulthood. Still, there is a little amount of growth hormone secreted in the circulation of adults. Abnormalities of growth hormone secretion. As you see in the figure, one of the most important growth hormone abnormalities is dwarfism. Dwarfism occur mainly due to panhypobituitarism during childhood. There is no secretion from the 
from the pituitary and from the hypothalamus. So if there is no excretion of hormones from the pituitary and hypothalamus, it's called ban hypopituitarism. A person with a classic growth hormone deficiency have normal intelligence, short stature, obesity with immature facial features and some delay in skeletal maturation. Puberty often is delayed, especially if the condition is accompanied by gonadotrophin releasing hormone deficiency, which is responsible for the sex hormone secretion. Treatment is by human growth hormone, which is synthesized through a component DNA technology, which is very effective for those children with a pure growth hormone deficiency and when it's given in early stages of life will produce a cure, a, cu a complete cure of the disease. In a rare condition called African Bijmi and Loran type dwarfism, growth hormone level is normal. In this case, which is called African Bijmi, there is a normal level of growth hormone or it may be elevated level of growth hormone. Okay, where is the defect? The defect, there is a hereditary defect in the insulin-like growth factor production that can be treated directly by giving insulin-like growth factor one replacement for these patients. A pan hypopituitarism in adults have three common causes. You have to differentiate between a pan hypopituitarism in children, which results in dwarfism, and a pan hypopituitarism in adults, which have three common causes, and we will see what will it produce. Three common causes of pan hypopituitarism in adults, which are craniopharyngioma, chromotumor, and thrombosis of pituitary blood vessels. Either the patients have type of tumors like craniopharyngioma or chromotumor, or have thrombosis of pituitary blood vessels, so pituitary gland will have no blood supply, which may occur when a mother develops circulatory shock after birth of her baby. How these patients introduced? Clinical features including hypothyroidism, decreased glucocorticoids by the adrenal glands, and suppressed secretion of gonadotropic tropic hormones. Thus, the patient will be lethargic due to deficiency of thyroxine, gaining weight because of lack of fat metabolization, metabolism by the growth hormone and acetylcholine, cortisol, and thyroid hormone, and loss of all sexual functions. We discussed in the last two or three slides the effect of decreased growth hormone secretion during childhood, which result in dwarfism, and during adulthood, which result in ban hypopituitarism. Now, when growth hormone secretion increase, it will cause a condition called gigantism. Gigantism is a condition where growth hormone excess occur before puberty. And you know, before puberty, there is no fusion of the periosteal size. So, growth hormone increase when occur before puberty result in gigantism. Excessive secretion of a growth hormone by somatotrop adenomas, which is tumor, cause gigantism in the 
prepubertal child. All body tissue will grow rapidly, including bones. The condition occurs before adolescence, before the epiphyses of long bones have become fused with the shaft. So, this will result in increased height so that the person become a giant up to 8 feet tall. The patients with gigantism will have hyperglycemia, 10% diabetes, ban hypopituitarism, and usually die early in the adulthood. Fortunately, the condition is rare because of early recognition and the treatment of the adenoma by surgical removal. These are samples of gigantism. So, if growth hormone excess occur in adulthood, we will call it acromegaly. Gigantism is excess growth hormone occurred during childhood, while acromegaly is excess growth hormone occurred during adulthood when the epiphyses have been fused. When the growth hormone excess occur in adulthood or after epiphyses of the long bones have fused, the condition is referred to as acromegaly. Acromegaly result from excess level of growth hormone that stimulate hepatic secretion of IGF-1, which cause most of the clinical manifestation of acromegaly. The person cannot grow taller, but the bones can become thicker and the soft tissue can continue to grow. Why? Because the long bone epiphyses have been fused so the long bone will have no ability to become taller while the membranous bones like the jaw bones and the skull have ability to become thicker soft tissue have ability to continue growth so most common cause of acromegaly is Somatotrop adenoma, which is a type of a tumor, occur in the somatotrops. Approximately 75% of persons with acromegaly have large, expensive tumors that erode the cella torsica. Other causes of acromegaly are excess secretion of growth hormone releasing hormone by the hypothalamus occur due to tumors, ectopic growth hormone releasing hormone secretion by non-endocrine tumors such as carcinoid tumor or small cell lung carcinoma and ectopic secretion of growth hormone by non-endocrine tumor this means if the patient have a tumor in the site other than the uh, other than uh, the uh, uh, somatotropes it have ability to produce growth hormone releasing hormone as that in the small cell lung carcinoma which produce growth hormone releasing hormone which stimulate the growth hormone secretion how these patients appear to us which are their clinical features Patients will have enlargements of bones of the hands and the feet and the membranous bones. The forehead slants forward because excess development of supraorbital ridge. Nose is twice the normal size. Hands and feet twice the normal size. Hunched back, which is called kyphosis with abnormal glucose tolerance tests and hyperprolactinemia. This is how a patient with acromegaly appear with large supraorbital ridge, visual disturbance due to a presence of large supraorbital ridge which interfere with visual acuity, large nose and large jaw, cardiomegaly, pancreas, abnormalities result in a abnormal glucose tolerance test and 
enlarged hands and feet. The major cause of mortality in those patients with acromegaly relates to continued growth of the internal organs, in particular the heart, resulting in cardiomegaly. Congestive heart failure is the most common cause of the death. Thank you very much for your listening and I will see you in the next lecture.